Welcome to Cutting Edge Cosplay, where your fellow geek girls hang out and talk about all things cosplay. And you might be wondering why we are dressed the way we are. <laughs> For those of you listening, you really should be watching this one today. Today we're going to be doing Cosplay Posing 101. So we'll go through a bunch of different characters who have different personalities and different ways of posing and talk about different ways that we can improve our posing in cosplay. So who's first? I'm doing a Battle Merida, and I think it's only fitting that we charge in first. <laughs> All right, I love it. Ferris, you're up. <laughs> goodbye, goodbye. <laughs> okay, so Bears is up first, and Bears is doing Battle Merida. So tell us a little bit about the important parts of your character. So my character is built off of a Celtic Viking version of Merida from the movie Brave, which is a Disney movie. Um, this is gonna be a more Celtic based shoot, which means that we're gonna be focusing more on weapons and stoicness and badassery, but trying to mix in a couple of tidbits of the character as well, who's kind of a more sassy, free spirit, mm -hmm. like independent woman kind of vibe. Mm -hmm. Not too proper. Certainly not. She's royalty, okay. but she's not excited about it. Right. <laughs> right. If you haven't seen Brave, do it. Yeah. It's so underrated. It's such a good heartwarming movie. For real. Okay. So it's important to be able to identify what is important to your character because here's the thing. When it comes to cosplay posing, it's similar but not quite the same to modeling or anything like that, because every character is going to be different. What you're talking about for your character is not how Zatanna would pose. And so, you know, it's always good to think of a couple of go-to poses for conventions per character and not have the same one for all of your characters. Even if it looks really good on you, it might not match the character. So that's why it's really helpful to identify what's important to your character so you can identify, so you can talk about that to your photographer and they know what you're looking for. So, and they might actually have some really good ideas too. Mm -hmm. So let's look, we, we pulled some reference photos, also a huge, a huge tip yes. <laughs> for if you're doing any sort of cosplay, anything. Reference photos are your friend, especially since so many of these characters are in the media, whether yes. they're comics, whether they're movies, whether they're anything else. So you have references. And some of these poses are very iconic to the character too. So always helpful, always helpful. So, so. I knew that I was gonna be working with Rebecca, so I made sure that she had all of the pictures that I was thinking of. And I knew that our photographer on hand would also need them, so he's got them too. Yes. Um, I did a lot of research on my own. Do not rely on your photographer to right. help you with this. Come ready. I did some research on my own to make sure that I was doing both sides of the character justice, the one, the Disney character, which is Merida, <laughs> and the historical character, which is the Viking aspect. Um, in the movie, Merida uses a bow. And so that's what we're going to be using as one of our props today. Historically speaking, Celtic warriors used battle axes. In the movie, she uses a long sword, but historically speaking, for the vibe that I'm going for, that doesn't make a lot of sense for the character, so we're not doing that. So these are the two that we're gonna be working with today. Also, we've got the six shield. Hell yeah, <laughs> check that out. Oh, it's so beautiful. The wood grain and everything like. Ugh. So Juan will be doing our photography today. Um, so you'll hear, you might hear <laughs> shutter clicks in the background. That's Juan taking pictures so we can show you the references of what we're doing and what we're tweaking. So another reason why you should really be watching this on YouTube instead of just listening on Spotify. So <laughs> we'll do our best to describe it. Can't guarantee perfection, but we'll try. So, all right, this is the first one for bears. Um, we'll put a reference photo up of our reference photos as well, so you can see what we're trying to emulate. Um, when it comes to reference photos, sometimes people like to replicate it exactly, as close as humanly possible. Sometimes it's more of the gist of things. Um, so, bears, what are you looking for in this specific shot? We're gonna go with Essence O for this one. Okay, cool, I like it. I'm missing certain portions of it, and but otherwise the character seems like it would work. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna put this down. Alrighty. So this is a little bit to the side. So Juan is actually right over here. So I'm gonna be focusing all of my posing to this mm -hmm. direction. Perfect. Okay. So, so this 
I'm showing Bears her pose so she can kind of remember the essence of, right? Mm -hmm. um, and something that Bears might want to tell the photographer if it's specific to the shot or not is, hey, can you shoot from this height? So it could be straight on from like chest height. If somebody wants something more like powerful and dominating, they might ask the photographer to shoot from a lower angle, like from here, because it makes you look a little taller and height tends to portray dominance as you know, opposite of somebody who's doing something more meek, they might shoot from above. So, um, Bears, how would you like your photographer to be? I think right where you're at is great. Nice. Um, my goal is to look stoic and powerful. Cool. How do I angle my body? Yeah, <laughs> good question. <laughs> so you're, you're already basically there because this one, she's kind of sideways, but not like total side profile. So it looks pretty good. Maybe even go a little bit further. I'm going to turn you this way. Yep. Stop. Good. So when it comes to how Bears has her feet, she could choose where she wants to shift her weight. So if she shifts her weight back, her leg is going to look a little bit longer. If she shifts her weight forward, her booty's going to look bigger. So it depends what she wants to go for here. Um, back and do one of these. Or you can do that. Yes. So and my waist looks a little smaller and uh -huh. my boobs look a little bigger. And that's because whatever's closer to the camera looks bigger and whatever is further from the camera looks smaller. So if she's bending forwards, the waist goes backwards, especially in a corset, it looks very extreme and the chest looks larger because it's closer. Okay. Your angle looks great. Your shoulders are back, which looks great because <laughs> this is a very like powerful stoic pose. Yep. Your chin looks great. Something to keep in mind with faces. Yep, there's is already doing it. When it comes to head position with a lot of photography, not always, um, but it can be helpful to think about ET. <laughs> so ET has a very long and forward neck. So you kind of think of a string coming from the top of your head going up and then putting your chin forward just a little bit. Feels weird, photographs really well, gets rid of some chins <laughs> if that's your concern. So. so if I'm in this pose right here, Yes. How I know that you do little modifications in the moment. I do. How do you decide what to do? Sometimes I don't decide. Okay. <laughs> That's the thing. So what Bears is talking about is a lot of the time if I'm working with a photographer, especially someone I've worked with before, I will probably let them know that I'm just going to kind of keep moving a little bit. Every time I hear a shutter, it's going to be a slightly different picture because having three of the same picture of this doesn't really help either of you. But if you have a picture like this, a picture like this, and a picture like this, they're subtly different, but you and the photographer can choose which one actually fits the photo the best. So subtle differences with your head, for example, could be subtle differences with the height of the bow, could be subtle differences with the way that your weight is shifted or how turned you are or not. A lot of differences. Yeah, exactly. Nice. Now, sometimes at photo shoots, there will be music and you can't hear the clicks. <laughs> so some photographers, I'll ask if they can say click. Let's change it up. Nice. Feeling the vibe. Nice. So it's Bears is basically doing the same pose, but opposite side of her body. So maybe somebody has a quote unquote good side um, or a side that they prefer to be photographed. It can always be good to get both and then you get a choose because some costumes like Bears has a really cool pauldron on one shoulder. Maybe she wants to show that off. Excellent. <laughs> uh-huh. So we have no arrows today, but Varys is pulling on her bow. Her chin is up. Looks really good. What are you thinking about? I'm thinking about if I wanted to be not afraid mm. in a battle situation. So very brave. Very brave. <laughs> so fearless. Yeah, yeah, confident. And I want to portray that I'm not afraid of you, even though this is a life and death situation. Mm-hmm. So just trying to go through how would I, even if I was afraid, how would I pretend that I wasn't? Nice. I'm also trying to think of from where his camera is, how to make it look like I'm going to shoot him. Mm -hmm. Pretend there's an arrow here. <laughs> um, how I'm going to make it look like I'm going to shoot him because there are certain, uh, certain things that you need to take into account. Like if you're actually shooting your weapon, whether it's a bow and arrow or a gun at the camera, mm -hmm. correct me if I'm wrong, but you can't 
really do that and make it look good? Very rarely, if ever. I think the only time that pointing any sort of a prop gun at the camera straight on would look good is if it's if the camera is focused on the barrel, so it's a specific like you're going to die kind of a picture, but you're not gonna see the like cosplayer probably because it's gonna be focused on the barrel. And the gun just looks short. If I had a long sword and pointed it directly at the camera, it is now a dot. <laughs> it is no longer a sword because pictures are 2D. Mm -hmm. So good point. If you have an arrow and you're shooting right at the camera, it might actually disappear. So it can be helpful to either shoot a little higher than the camera, a little lower than the camera, or slightly to the side just so we can see the entire bow. It doesn't have to be only, you know, Egyptian side profile kind of a thing, but straight on, you might lose some things. So that's a really, really good point. <laughs> Goofing. In this one, I'm thinking of Egyptian. <laughs> yes. Cool. Okay. Do you want to move on to a different Let's pose? Let's do a different one. Okay. Which one would you like? Let's do... Awesome. All right, so now we've got a new prop in the game. An axe. <laughs> a straight up battle axe. So. I've actually never posed with a battle axe before. And yeah. I actually borrowed this from you. That's true. <laughs> so I'm gonna need you to teach me your tricks. Sure, so some weapons will have some sort of a grip indicator. Um, I usually put my hand on this unless I specifically want to show it. I have never professionally used a battle axe, so I don't know <laughs> exactly what you're supposed to do, but I know pretty close. Um, it's kind of like, you know, when people are cosplaying baseball players and they're like, that's not how your hand goes. It's like, okay, like try to get as close as you can. It's okay if it's not perfect, in my opinion. Um, if somebody gets picky about it, that's on them. So okay. how would you, how do you think Merida would hold a battle axe? I think she would kind of be like ready for people to come at her. Nice, so Barry's is crouched a little bit, which is great, ready for battle. This hand, I'd probably move it down just a smidge and a tight grip. There you go. Yep. Because if you're going to swing that thing, this is heavy, right? If you're going to swing it, you want your hands to be strong. You might even flex your bicep a little bit, right? Because that gives tension in the muscles. And you can kind of tell in a picture, even if her arms are covered, you can tell if something is tense or not in a picture. Dim so muscles. She so. actually has a iconic picture with a long sword. But I yes. want to just switch it out for this. Yes. So I'm going to come over here. Do, do what you were doing, and we'll do small adjustments. And also, go ahead and stand up for a second too. Actually, that's a good point. Don't, don't stay in a position for too long if you don't have to because you will get exhausted. Um, posing uses so many more muscles than you actually think, and after most of my photo shoots, I am sore either that night or the next day. Um, so, when you're holding this, it's heavy. When you're doing something with your thighs, your quads, eventually your legs are gonna start shaking, right? Okay. So something to consider if you're doing some sort of a battle position, go ahead and try it, talk with Juan, see what looks good. Um, and then once you figure it out, stand up, shake it off, and then get back into it. Now your legs are fresh. You're not gonna be shaking. Your arms aren't gonna be shaking because you haven't been holding it out like this for that long, right? Okay. Um, and so it's gonna look really nice and sweet. And then do your little <laughs> tweaks from there. So okay. absolutely. Okay. So it looks to me like she's kind of doing like a, mm -hmm. but like out in front. It's a little bit behind her, just a smidge. Yep, totally. Yeah. I know you have a pauldron. Can you put the shoulder down just a little? Nice. Nice. Cool. Do a little adjustment. And doing these kind of tweaks and adjustments with friends or anybody else that you'll be cosplaying with is super helpful. And it can be helpful to let people know if you don't want help. Because <laughs> sometimes yeah. people don't want to be coached or don't want to be overcoached or don't want somebody to say, move your hand just one inch this way. And some people do if you're really trying to recreate something perfectly, but some people that, I'm one of those people, I'm people, that bothers me. Um, so when I'm learning, great. When I'm doing like an actual photo shoot, I don't want people doing that very much. And so, but some people like it. So that's another good thing to establish with whoever you're cosplaying with or, or your photographer or anything like that too. Cool. Awesome. There's so let's- one last one that I kind of wanted to try and it's kind of a more crouched down one. Yes, I'm so glad you mentioned that. Is it this one? Mm -hmm. I love this one. And this is another thing that's really helpful to keep in mind for photo shoots. So I come from a theater background as y'all know. And part of that is creating 
levels. Levels is not leveling up. <laughs> it is what kind level you are, in a way, yeah. Um, it's what level you are in space. So you could be standing, you could be crouching, you could be kneeling, you could be sitting, you could be laying down on the floor, you might be jumping. So these are different heights that your body is taking up in space. Why is that helpful? Because it gives you a variety of your pictures. If all of your pictures are standing, there's a lot you can do while standing, but only so much. So if you think about how many different levels can I do with this cosplay, like crouching, like kneeling, like this, you're gonna get some really cool diverse photos that are gonna look uniquely different from each other and gonna stand out. Okay. So, awesome, let's do it. Okay. This is a really powerful pose. So in this picture, I'm gonna be defending against an onslaught from behind me, but I'm ready for a, an attack from in front of me as well. Right. So for this one, we want to put a knee down. Are you able to do that in this cosplay? I am. Okay, that's a good thing to check with too. Some of these pictures aren't realistic based on your cosplay, right? So I have a corset on. I'm not gonna be able to do a lot of bendy things. <laughs> and that's just a good thing to know. So also if you have like knee pads or something on that are fragile, you're not gonna wanna kneel on them. Mm -hmm. So be careful with which poses you choose, but good, glad you have mobility there. So with this one, that's already really, really close. Here are some tweaks for that. So right now your legs are very straightforward. Uh -huh. What you're gonna wanna do is move this knee out a little bit more. So you're kind of going to want to do something. <laughs> My hip popped. <laughs> you're going to want to do, yeah, exactly. Because okay. this is going to show some of your leg. OK. That's great. Yep, and her weight is on her back leg, so that's wonderful. She's got this crossed in front of her right here. Is exactly. this a good hand location for this? I'd say that's pretty good. Does it feel balanced? Yeah. Okay. Then yes. If I held it down lower, it would go. <laughs> and then she's looking kind of off to the side of one. Nice. What are you thinking? I'm thinking that this is one of those poses that if we were taking a long time to set up, mm -hmm. is exactly what you were saying earlier. It's hard to hold this position, actually. Yeah. Physically, it's pretty difficult. Um. Wait, I'm trying, what I'm trying to do. <laughs> It's fun because you. as we're Talked over. as we're posing and talking about it, it's giving me ideas for other poses to do. Nice, nice. That's cool. So now Bears is doing more of a lunging pose. So this is different than the photo, but in the same mood. Nice. That's awesome. But again, it is <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> it's hard. Hard to hold your hands up. It turns out. Uh huh. Cool. Well, nice. I think I got well a lot done. of really good information. So thank you so much. You're so welcome. Oh. You killed it. <laughs> Great job. I'm a model now. <laughs> <laughs> you graduated. Okay. Awesome. Great job. How do you feel? Thank you so much. I feel yeah. like I feel like I have a better understanding now of where my body needs to be in relation to the camera. Well, and I could see like the longer that you were doing this, the more in character you were getting, you were just like, I'm off book now, let's go. And that was just great. That was awesome. Uh, yeah, you get you just get ideas after ideas. Okay, goodbye. And hello. hello. Welcome. <laughs> so, this is Danny. Danny's working up now. So Danny, tell us about your character. I am Marin. Yeah. I am Marin from oh. Dress Up Darling an anime that's pretty popular right now. And uh, it's very, I thought it was very fitting because we have a cosplay podcast. Of course, Marin is obsessed with cosplay. And in the story, she has her man uh, make all of her cosplays for her, which is a great relationship That is a great to relationship, be in. yep. So <laughs> she is pretty popular in school. She's pretty high energy, very obsessed with her characters that she wants to cosplay. Mm -hmm. So I was hoping to uh, learn how to be very expressive. Cool, love it. So it sounds like the focus of yours is gonna be more of that expressive and how to portray energy through a still image. Mm -hmm. Awesome, I dig it. All right, let me get those reference pictures. Okay, so where do you want to start, Danny? Let's just start with maybe this one. Cool. Yeah, so this is very different than Merida. So this is a very classic anime cute peace sign pose. So how would you go about this? Um, I would have the photographer be a little bit lower, like kneeling mm -hmm. down. And I'm going to be like kind of kneeling down towards him. Mm -hmm. Just trying to... 
Pick him up and um, get him in a better mood. Like, oh, hey, yeah. how are you doing? Okay. And yeah. Awesome. Let's do that. Cute. So that's a really genuine smile because Danny just started smiling. That looks great. Some people might get somebody to smile a little bit. You might think of something funny um, and also take breaks <laughs> and breathe. <laughs> Breathing is so important too. That's really, really cute though. Nice. Now with this shot, I know in the reference, it's kind of from the waist up, but even if something's from the waist up, your feet still matter <laughs> a little bit. Because if I'm doing something really epic, like I'm flexing with my upper body, but my lower body is just standing there, I'm not going to feel powerful, right? <laughs> and so if you're doing something cute like this, but your legs are like, whatever, <laughs> right? Which is not what you're doing. Um, but if you're just like, oh, whatever, but you're like this, that's not going to sell it as much as like, if you did this, but we can't see it, but you can feel it. Yeah, you have to have a cute feet. Cute feet. <laughs> oh, <it's> <laughs> awesome. Do you want to do a same pose, different one? Um, let's do the one where she has just seen something she's absolutely in love with. So she's just like, okay. <gasps> yes. So this one has a lot of emotion. <laughs> so even if it's from, for this one, it's kind of like just a face shot. Um, but still, Danny's feet are going to matter. She's still doing something very cute. And exactly, exactly what Danny is doing. So she's getting in and out of the pose, kind of re-expressing herself. So she might go, ah, ah, <laughs> like a couple of times. You might sound weird. It's going to look good. So exactly. <laughs> yep. In the pose, she had her pee -pee, like almost. Is it just the pee, -pee? Yeah, she's yeah. kind of framing her framing. eyes. Exactly. Nice. Good, good. So Danny is doing some with her mouth open, some with it closed. Her eyes look very excited. Great. Those look awesome. How does it feel? I feel energized. Good. <laughs> good, good, good. Yeah, and so when it comes to pictures that have your hands near your face, some photographers get very specific about wanting it to be symmetrical because sometimes if it's a little bit like this, it might not show the same way that you want oh, it to. And okay. so they can help make sure it's symmetrical. Or if you're doing, like, for example, this is a modeling thing, not a cosplay thing, you almost never want them symmetrical because it never will be because <laughs> symmetry yeah. is really hard. So you might try to do something different. But for this one, it's symmetrical. So work with your photographer to make sure that your eyes are framed the way that you want them to. Good. Or should I do it again? Okay. I okay. just saw... The cutest cosplay the in the cutest window. The cutest cosplay ever. <laughs> <laughs> cute do a little tweak nice nice good good and even as Danny is tweaking her pose with every click of the camera your legs are shifting too which is a good thing your your whole body changing it up which is Make great me skinnier <laughs> <laughs> awesome want to do another one yeah I have one more where Marin is doing her iconic so peace cute. pose, but she has her school bag. She does. And I have to show off my school bag because I am in my 30s. I'm not in high school anymore, but I can still appreciate things. So cute. So I have a Witcher Eda bag. <laughs> and that's yeah. gonna be, it's so cute. <laughs> oh my it's cute. So it's, it's not a school bag, but it's my D&D bag and I bring it. Oh for my gosh. My games. That's <laughs> perfect. I also notice in this pose, her hair is moving. So there are a couple of things that you can do when you're doing photography that includes movement. Um, so if it's hair or a non-living thing, you might have somebody flip it for you and drop it, or you might move it yourself and just like go back and forth and have them click it to hope that they capture it at the right time. So what do you think would work for this? Maybe I could either move quickly. This wig I'm wearing is actually kind of heavy, so I'm not sure it's gonna have the same effect, I but. I will talk about that then. Because if, if it's heavy, wigs are heavy and they will not move the same as natural hair. That is just a fact. And so it can be very helpful to have somebody help with the wig magic. So Juan, let me know when you're ready. And ready. And again. And ready. Cool. And even while I'm tossing her hair, I'm throwing it out a little bit. I'm throwing it back. Because even if one has like perfect timing and gets it at the exact same time every time, now we have a difference of how our hair is falling for every picture. Let's try it again with series. And there you go. And you can tell us as soon as I start clicking. Okay. Uh, 
Cute. Awesome. Nice. How'd that feel? Good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right? These, this is also a great tip for capes or things like that. Have somebody drop your cape, have somebody throw it, because dropping it can look different than throwing it. Um, movement can be made in pictures. <laughs> you just have to be a little bit clever with it. That looked really good on my end. Fun. Juan, how did it look on yours? It looked great. Yay! Oh. <laughs> Nailed it! <laughs> Oh, oh, cute. <laughs> Am so, I an anime character? Is it anime? me? Well, the, the great thing about what just happened here, so Juan just showed Danny what the photo looks like. This is so, so helpful. If you can talk to your photographer about, hey, can I see how that one turned out? That way you can gauge how you're doing. You know if you need to adjust something, if you need to adjust a costume piece because it got untucked, something like that. You can see if you're at the angle that you want to be and if they're at the angle you want them to be ahead of time. Because otherwise, if it's at the end of the shoot, you had no way of knowing. <laughs> so it's really good to check your progress as you're shooting. So exactly what just happened is so helpful. It's subtle, but it makes a big difference. Cool. Thanks so much, Danny. All right. And you're off. Hello. Welcome. <laughs> Hi. So Bunny is dressed as Harley Quinn. So Bunny, tell us about your cosplay. Um, well, Harley in general is kind of a trickster, um, Harley Quinn. Uh, uh -huh. uh, <laughs> so I have a few props. I've got some little guns. I've got Perfect. like some mallet mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And so we're kind of going for a fun, playful kind of attitude, but also maybe a little crazy. Okay. So that sets you apart from what Danny just did, which is fun and playful. But Danny's is more fun, playful, high energy. Yours is definitely fun, playful, high energy, but also has a little bit of an agenda, <laughs> right? So a little bit of a screw loose, right? Cool. So what what would you like to start with? Um, we could start a little basic with like maybe the first one there. Yeah, the super classic pose. Always what I think of with her. Love it. What okay, do we do? So here you go. Hips, wait, legs. Nice. Awesome. Now, Bunny is wearing a corset, which is going to make her waist look snatched, but also the way that you have your hands on a corset can vary a lot. So exactly, you might do this, you might do this. Um, with a corset, sometimes you can cheat in a little bit and it makes your waist look even smaller because your hand is actually covering up more. Um, so that can be a tip too. Um, and if you're not wearing a corset or if your hand is on your body in any other way, it can be also helpful to very gently touch or float your hand because sometimes you might end up pressing, for example, your arm against your body, which makes your arm actually look bigger. Oh, and so yeah. if you float your arm out, it's not gonna squish against your body. Um, so not relevant to this pose, but can be helpful to remember. So hand on your hip. Yep, your weight is toward your like out hand. Hips out too. Yeah, yeah, her hips are almost kind of forward a little bit, yeah. right? Just a little bit. Uh huh. With face towards my hand, but uh -huh. looking that way, right? Right, exactly. And her chin's down just a little. Nice. Cool. What are you thinking? Uh, about my pose. <laughs> uh <-huh>. Yes, <laughs> that's honest. Exactly. So what would Harley be thinking? Uh, what am I about to do today? Mm -hmm. <laughs> How am I going to get someone in trouble? What am I going to do? Whose life will I ruin? I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, who are we going to just cause problems for today? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Absolutely. So do that same pose and think of those things. Wait, this way? Mm -hmm. Yep. Nice. Nice, so I can, I can see more intention in your eyes already. And the way that your facial expression is adjusting with every pose too, I can tell what you're thinking. And that's mm -hmm. a big difference. It's so subtle, but it does translate over, I promise you. She nice. like hips forward. Yep, okay. nice. Nice, good. That looks really good. Yay! <laughs> so awesome. good. Feedback from the photographer can be really helpful. I love it when their cheerleaders are like, yes, you look great, keep going. I'm like, thank you, I know, it's so good. It's so nice when they do that. Oh my gosh. What do you want to do? Um, okay, we could do some with the mallet. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I've that got has a, a cool smirk. Mallet. I like it. Cool, so we're kind of doing the classic bat behind the head kind of a pose. Doing this one. Okay. Okay. 
So for this, it's pretty straightforward, but there's a lot of variance that you can do here. Um, you might play with how wide or narrow your hands are on the mallet, how low or high up it is on your back, shifting your weight if your feet are closer together or further apart. Since you're wearing a corset, something that can be really cool for the eyes is as many optical illusions as possible. <laughs> so you're creating good triangles, which creates negative space, which is always a good thing instead of being blocky. So you got that. And since we have a corset, we're kind of looking at the, the chest waist hip ratio, but our eyes don't just stop there. They also go to our ankles. <laughs> so if we cross our knees or cross our ankles, that creates another curve. And wherever something crosses or crosses over, it's going to look smaller. So now we're just like, holy cow, <laughs> the curves on this girl. So nice. So she's just adjusting which leg is in front crossing, if she's crossing at the knee or the ankles. I can also tell that Bunny is like playing with if her foot is kicked out or not, which is a very playful thing to do. That's great. She's dancing around a little <laughs> bit, which is helpful. And if there's music going on in a photo shoot, you're gonna bop around a little bit and that can create some, some really cool movement in photos as well. Nice. <laughs> that looks great. So what are you thinking about? Um, what I'm gonna break. Nice, yes. nice. How might you Faces. break that thing? Huh? Nice. What? <gasps> what you just did, you oh. just like swung <laughs> it around. Swirl. Totally. So do that at your own pace, at a safe pace. At a safe pace. Because <laughs> I think that could create some cool images too. <laughs> do not hit yourself with your props. <laughs> nice. Good. Nice. Good. And so we. Good, so what Bunny is doing, she's doing a slow-mo swing with her mallet, which is super helpful with any sort of action pose. Most action poses can be slowed down, unless you're in midair, in which case you cannot fight gravity. <laughs> so, but in this situation, we can. And so she's kind of acting like she's swinging through honey, or swinging through molasses, which gives the photographer time to get a lot of different angles of the mallet. That's great. She's playing with the knees bent, her knees unbent. That looks awesome. And the photographer is playing with height as well, so he just sat on the ground too. Smash the photographer. Yes. Good, 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 good. <laughs> good. <laughs> That's awesome. Good. Those slow motions can be really helpful for dynamic poses like this. Because, Bunny, what would happen if I told you to stay here for about five minutes? Uh. <laughs> Not gonna happen. I would, yeah. That, you're gonna be, be on the ground. ground. Let's, let's try some different levels here doing that. Exactly, <laughs> you're not gonna be having fun. You're gonna be on that level <laughs> pretty soon. Exactly, so that's a good one where you wanna do it in slow-mo because you can reasonably hold yourself for that long, mm -hmm. but trying to stay on one foot for too long is just not gonna work. So speaking of levels, I would love to see you try either that one or that one. Perfect. What do you think? Uh, yeah. Let's try that one because I've got the mallet. I was hoping you would say okay. that. Awesome. <laughs> so this is a sitting pose. Now, would you like to do this on a seat or on the ground? Uh, a seat, maybe. Okay. I'm but going I to grab a little rock stool. on it or something. Should we lower it, maybe? Yeah, maybe. We we'll probably have to sit on it in order to lower it. A little bit further forward. Careful. Yes. <laughs> Good. <laughs> awesome. Okay. So this is also a very dynamic pose. If I had you hold this for a long time, your abs will give out. Great. So this is a good one to practice how you want all of your limbs to be, to relax, and then to get back into it. Your body will mostly remember and you'll be pretty darn close. So, yep, the, the leg that is closest to the photographer will be out, great. Um, and this knee is up a little bit, exactly. That's a great spot for your hand, maybe even a little closer to your hip for stability, nice. And then your hand is on the mallet, exactly. Exactly, and her head is kind of tilted back a little bit. And right from there. here you can kind of adjust where your head is too with each click. Nice. Good. Don't forget to breathe. <laughs> <laughs> I do all of my photo shoots mm -hmm. about breathing. Nice, good. That's so cool. <laughs> good. And relax a little bit. Good, good. <laughs> See, if you don't tell someone to relax, they might not, and then they'll be exhausted. Good, cool. I always have to remember the shoulders. Back. That looks good. Yeah, nice long neck extends to her shoulder. Her chest is up. 
Very cute, very classic pinup. Yes, oh. yeah, I'll catch you if you fall. <laughs> Good. So now Bunny is just shifting and she's gonna do the other side. Um, something you might also consider is switching up which leg is bent in the front and which one's not. Because sometimes okay. it looks really good to have the front leg longer. Um, more often than not, that's the case. But sometimes it could be really cute to have the front leg bent. Um, and you get some different dynamics there too. So you might try switching it up this time. Let me get out of the shot. Ooh, gosh. <laughs> Good, point your toes. <laughs> yep, shake it out for sure. Pointed toes are very helpful in most poses. There are some poses where non-pointed toes make a lot of sense, um, but pointing your toes is gonna elongate your legs, um, which looks really, really good in photography. Cute. Good. Awesome, how you doing? Yeah, you're breathing, <laughs> that's good. It's a workout and with a corset, your mm -hmm. abs work differently. And so Definitely. you're leaning back, but you're only pushing against the corset. <laughs> you're only gonna be able to do that for that long. So very, very good, I'm impressed. How did that feel playing around with the different variations of that pose? It felt a little bit more chaotic, so that was good for the character. Yeah, so. yeah, totally, yeah. awesome. Do you wanna do any more? Uh, let's do the gun one real quick. I like it. Yeah. Awesome. My face is still itchy. Oh no. <laughs> okay. You get your hair. Yeah. Okay, and she kind of has her leg kind of out a bit too, doesn't she? Yeah, so her feet are kind of out, which is hard for some people's hips and fine for other people, which is another point. Know your abilities, know your flexibilities, and know what's possible and what's not. I like to remind people cartoon characters don't have bones because they're not real. <laughs> and some of these poses are not possible for real humans or are only possible for a very rare few humans. So some people are comfortable sitting like this, some are not. If you're not comfortable but want to do this, let your photographer know so you can do it quickly but you don't get stuck in this position. I'm like wondering how I should like prop myself up higher maybe? Or is her back she, leg is not being down. seen so you could sit on your back foot. Yep, yep, and your hands towards your foot, great. Looks good. Wait, bang, okay. Mm -hmm. Yep, and so here she might play with the height of her chin. She might play with if her torso is bending forwards or backwards. Sure Winking. Head back a little bit. <laughs> that wasn't a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of it. <laughs> good, good. Awesome. Cool. Are we, oh. <laughs> Good. Well done, bunny. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Learning to walk again. Awesome. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to do some Zatanna poses. Um, a couple of things I'm going to focus on with these ones is movement. Um, but after we do some movement poses, I'm also gonna do like 30 seconds to a minute of flow posing, and I'll talk about that in just a second too. But for now, I'm going to do one that requires me to have a continuous rocking motion. So what I'm doing here for those listening, not watching, which you should be watching if you are not watching because it just makes so much more sense. So um, what I'll be doing is I'll be balancing on one leg and bringing one knee up. One hand will be out, one arm will be over behind my head, and Bunny is going to help floop my hair. So <laughs> there's a lot of movement going on. I certainly cannot stand on one leg and heels for that long. So what we're gonna do is just kind of do it over and over and over and see until our photographer says, I got the shot, <laughs> right? So let's go ahead and give it a go. Bunny, are you ready? Yes. Okay, Juan, are you ready? And ready. Okay, one, two, three. One, two, three. So what I did, if you're watching, I just did two different things. So I did one where I went up and back, and then I did one where I went forward, because one is going to bend this toe, which I cannot stay like this <laughs> for that long. So if I fall forward, I catch myself, reset, and just do it over and over and over. So, a couple more? A couple more. Okay. One, two, three. One, two, three. 
I almost saw that one out of the corner of my eye, just <laughs> whoosh, hair in the eye. Straight <laughs> over. So now what I'm gonna do is that flow posing that I mentioned earlier. So this can be really helpful at the beginning of photo shoots if you want kind of to warm up and, and just get your body going, get more comfortable with the photographer, the character, get some music going. Some people like to do it at the end, just to have a catch-all for any poses that you might not have done or thought of. You maybe spend a lot of time focusing on specific poses. This is just a great way to get the, the last chance, right? So sometimes I'll just put on a song and it lasts for the song. And after that, we done. <laughs> so for this, um, I'm gonna tell Juan, so I'm gonna do a lot of movement, um, some slow, some fast. I'm also gonna play with my levels. So I'm gonna start standing up. I might have my front to you, my back to you, and then I might do some kneeling and I might do some sitting or even laying down. So we'll kind of start here <laughs> and work our way towards the ground. A lot of the times that's what I'll do when I'm doing flow posing because I want a lot of levels and it just makes sense to go one by one. <laughs> so, ready? Let's do it, okay. So I'm just shifting where my shoulders are. Cool, also a lot of chin movements there. But you have a two. I do? <gasps> Yay! It's my dream come true. Is it the corset? Yes. Tuck her under. So for this, with the back to him, I might switch up where my weight is going. So for example, if it's this. That's one thing, but if I push my leg this way, it's a booty shot now, which some people like, some people don't. Now I'm gonna get down a little bit. The tan really doesn't crouch that much that I've seen, so I'm just skipping that level. <laughs> so with these, I'm gonna ask Juan to let me know, and I'm gonna like swoosh my coattails. <laughs> so let me know when you're ready. Actually, I'm gonna put this down. We'll begin a series of shots, and then you can swoosh. Okay. So what I'm doing is I am I begin a, a series of shots to let her know when that way she can go whenever she's ready and she knows to begin when she begins. <laughs> Here's the clicking. So here we go and. What is the series of shots? Like what's the, the thing on the camera? So it's a continuous. You have a con single shooting and continuous shooting. Continuous will allow you to shoot a series of shots. So it's good for any time that there is motion or anything like that. I like to let the model be the one that initiates the movement. So I just start shooting and then she can feel free to lick her coattails whenever she's ready. That looks so cool. Wow. Awesome. For this, I'm going to actually, I'm going to steal one of these lights. Um, and just move it to me. So this is another helpful thing to keep in mind with photography, making sure we don't <laughs> take down the entire set here. So if you've watched America's Next Top Model, you have heard this before, find your light. What that means, and one, what I'm gonna ask you to do is take a picture of like, not what's right and wrong, because they're not hard and fast rules, but just to see differences. So. My light is right here in front of me. It's very bright. <laughs> Try not to look at it, <laughs> but sometimes you have to. But here, essentially, I want to show the difference between me just looking towards one and me looking towards the light. So when I'm looking towards the light, more of my face is going to be illuminated. Um, it can also be a choice to turn away from the light. This has to kind of be up to the photographer, too, because 
more than likely than not, your face might be in darkness, but it can be sometimes really moody to have kind of that hair light or a backlight as well. So I'm actually going to put this behind me a little bit. Am I blocking it? So here I'm gonna hide my eyes too. And since I know the focus is mostly my lips since my eyes are out of it, I'm going to try <laughs> to relax my lips. This is really hard to do for me personally. Some people say you should kind of do a p p kind of emotion. Some people like to say prune. Some people like to do their vowels. So ah, e, u, a, o, to get your mouth moving and so it's not so stiff. Some people call it model mouth <laughs> if it's too stiff. So um, I'm going to play with that too. Sure. Yeah, does that look good? Yeah, I'm really. The drama. <laughs> okay, so here we go. You might make weird sounds during a photo shoot, and that's like fine. <laughs> So right here I'm doing, ooh. It's different than, <laughs> you know, or something like that, but it still gets the mouth in a certain shape. So backlighting can be really interesting for really moody, dynamic, like, rah, kind of photos, um, but it's not for all of them, and some photographers really don't like shooting that way, and that's fine. <laughs> like, just work with each other's abilities. Don't look at the light that's very bright now. I just see a green square, <laughs> which is great. But even if we just keep it this way, we'll do that for the next couple, too. Oh, that's right cool, now, yeah. Face is lit up because we have turned off some of our lights yeah. on the set. That's awesome. Yeah, let's just take a couple more photos. Showcasing it in, um, in front of her on the side. Right now she's looking at the light. So she is not backlit really whatsoever. Photographer, can you see a shadow on my face? Yeah. yeah. Is it crisp and clear or is it blurry? Uh, bring, it a, bring your hand a little bit closer to So sometimes you can play with shadow as well. This is very artsy of artsy, but like it can create some interesting like movie poster type photos. So like maybe a portal is opening up and I don't really know what's going on. There you go, perfect. So for these, I know where the shadow is or isn't on my face because my eyes are either lit up or not. So I'm gonna try to keep them lit because the contacts are really cool. Yes, ma'am. Blue. Blue awesome. awesome. No, I cannot see you at all right now because <laughs> okay. I've just been. Hello, general direction of bunny. So now I'm going to play with the level of being of sitting. A little pin uppy, but not too pin uppy. Um, but this will just kind of get again some different levels. I think I pulled out a tail. I did. Okay. Cool. So with this. I'm conscious that I'm wearing a corset. If you follow me on TikTok, <laughs> you've heard me talk about this. Corsets look great from the front and they can sometimes look really funny from the side because corsets make you look wider from the side but narrower from the front because it makes you a, it, you go, your body goes from this to this. It's not really changing that much but it's changing where everything is. So I know if I'm sitting sideways like this, it's not gonna look that good. So one, <laughs> take a picture of this and why it might not look quite so good. But if I just change the angle a little bit, so I'm gonna put my feet a little closer towards Juan, get my ankles close to each other, still gonna lift my chest and everything. I'm gonna sit a little bit further upright so that my chest comes forward and my hips are a little further back. My waist will look a little bit different <laughs> in these pictures. Of course it <laughs> I can't not be. <laughs> so I might even do, you see these a lot of the times on like album covers where people kind of cross their legs in front. Um, and this is a thing where I'll tell the photographer, hey, I'm gonna try some things that might not look good. 
So <laughs> let's just see if we like this. And that can be good permission to just try a bunch of poses and see what you think. And if you don't like them, you just don't use them, but you, you might. So for this, I might do something like this. Might move my feet out, see if that's different. Or who knows, I might get the pictures back and it's just boots and a torso and that might look weird. So, <laughs> you know, it's, it's good to just try different things. Um, let's see, we're gonna baseball slide <laughs> this way just a little. So with the corset, like I said, I know it looks good from the front and obviously it's a corset, so it's gonna do a lot for your waist. But if I bring my knee when I'm laying, if I bring my knee forward and down, that creates a hip line right here and the eyes like following curves. So if I'm here, well, the eye is gonna go down the valley, <laughs> up the hills, and just kind of keep moving, which aesthetically looks really neat. So I might do something like this. Which is different than this, <laughs> right? It's just not gonna be as interesting. It's stiff, it's blocky, it's not as interesting. This looks more interesting. Compared to having one leg a little bit crossed in front of the other. Excellent. Ta-da, just like that. And let me move this back. And a lot of people, especially when they start cosplaying, but just like in general, group photo shoots are a thing. So the ladies are gonna join me again and we're gonna talk a bit about posing when you're in a group. So. I just changed. I was Merida a second ago, so my makeup's still a little Viking-ish. Forgive me. <laughs> we're about to do a how-to do group shoots, and we're going to be focusing on DC for this how-to series. Thank you to our patrons on Patreon for the recommendation. We love you a lot. <laughs> what Let's are we working on today? Awesome. So when it comes to groups, there are so many more factors at hand because there are more people. So that can be a very, very good thing in most situations. It can only be a bad thing if you're not coordinating with each other. Luckily, <laughs> we're friends. And also if you're at a convention, people are usually very friendly and they want the picture to come out well. So communication is really important with group shots. So our dynamic, Harley is a villain, <laughs> but she's also like a friendly villain. She does hang out with the heroes every so often. Birds of prey, you know, all that jazz. Um, <laughs> and then, of course, Bears and I are heroes, Canary and Zatanna. Um, so, potential dynamics, heroes versus villains. Heroes bring villain under our wing. We're hanging out. Harley comes to the good side. Harley is defeated. Harley wins. Um, there's also different things that we can do with levels. One person standing, two people sitting, two people standing, one person sitting, people kind of being boop, 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 like different levels. There's, there's a lot of options here. So let's just play around with it. Is there a direction that you want to start with? I know that we're both heroes, yep. but we don't team up very often True. in the comics. And I don't think ever on I screen. I don't think so. Let so, us know if we're wrong, but I don't think so. I want to know if we're wrong. I do. So what we can do is we're both fighting Harley, but coming at it from different side so okay you want to be in the middle so there's a couple ways we could do this we could do this all of us straight in a line harley is here or maybe it's focused on harley maybe it's our backs and oh, i'm yeah. doing a spell and you know bears is doing a canary cry and you can't see it but it's focused on harley's reaction and then maybe we reverse it maybe you get to see the heroes doing their their thing and we just kind of mirror it so let's see what happens here Nice, so what Bunny's doing is she's kind of shifting her eyes from the camera, like maybe an oh shit scenario. She's also looking at both of us and being like, who am I fighting? <laughs> Good, great, awesome. So now let's flip it. What happens if we're now looking at the heroes? Awesome, so I am also aware of where the camera is. So I know if I'm right here, camera cannot see me. So I know I need to be out this way. Awesome. 
Awesome. <laughs> so great. Bunny's doing an awesome job of kind of choosing her target or lack thereof, which is perfect. <laughs> so now let's do some in a line, because that's not inherently bad either. It could just be helpful to change up how things are going. So you're going down. How are we going to do this? What we could do. Uh-huh. Nice, nice. Is she meant to do that? On the <laughs> <laughs> Throw everything on the ground. <laughs> what? Is she's power move? She's yeah. fighting me and she's winning. Mm -hmm. She doesn't know that you've joined the battle. I like it. Cool. And then we can do kind of a burp, burp, burp. yeah, more totally. bars and more places kind of situation. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> Breaking a nail on your foot. <laughs> moving her mallet forward. For a second, I thought about grabbing her mallet. I didn't, but there's a lot of different options you can have with this where some I was kind of like whisper spelling towards her and some I was just like, bitch, no. <laughs> so you can, you can really play with a lot of things, even if you don't know what each other is doing, but it can also be helpful to determine, for example, it's that classic thing, guys, are we smiling in this picture or not, right? <laughs> and so are we being goofy? Are we being serious? What, what are the stakes can be helpful to establish too? Nice, well done. Let's do some, some levels. So Harley seems like a cross-legged kind of gal, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Canary, what would Canary do? Canary's kind of big and bold. Nice. But you made a good point earlier that Zatanna doesn't crouch. Not really. I haven't no. seen her do it much. Please, like, again, show me panels where she does. I know she, like, sometimes does this, like, when she's doing a spell, but it's never, like... Like the, the waiting video game character, she doesn't do that. So. No. Um, but it could be a bunch of things. Hmm. For example, if you're right here, I could, I'm not crouching, but I'm kneeling and I'm kind of putting my knees wider than Harley so you can see my fishnets, but then essentially what I'm gonna do is put them in as well in case that looks terrible, because <laughs> I don't know, I'm not the camera. And then that way Bears can be in the back doing her proud canary thing. Oh, that looks so cool. Where are you guys looking? I'm looking at the camera, that's a great question, so it can be helpful to establish where to look. So now I'm moving my knees in. We'll see if that makes a difference. You might be able to get, if Rebecca, mm -hmm. you're leaning a little bit this way. Kelly, maybe if you could move near her and go the opposite way. Oh, nice. Ooh. That looks really good. That's hot. <laughs> so fetch. <laughs> Stop Sorry. trying to make fetch happen. <laughs> you can't sell this. Does she even go here? <laughs> no, I don't actually. <laughs> I'm looking at the camera up here like it's you. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm just moving because we have three cameras plus a camera, so that's four cameras going. That looks really good. How fun. <laughs> oh, you know what? <laughs> it's a casualty. <laughs> That's such a cute little mallet. It can also be really cool. I, I notice I really like group shots where people are touching, right? Because mm -hmm. sometimes we, for some reason, even if you're friends, you're like, I don't want to touch their cosplay, I don't want to mess it up, I don't want to get in their business. Um, but it can be really interesting if people even are just like hand on the shoulder or like what um, Danny and I did earlier, we were holding hands. It doesn't have to be all up in someone's business, but interacting so you're sharing space can be a really cool way to add dynamics to a picture too. So how do you think we might do that? Hmm. Oh, I have an idea. I know I, my foundation's coming off on the inside of this hat, which means I know I have a line on my forehead. We're going to ignore that. Um, so I might pull something out of my hat. 
would you guys be interested in seeing what might be in there? So you might peek in, you know, somebody might have a hand on my shoulder to try to get a better look, things like that, exactly. Or we might be reaching in there. Wait, I should probably do my red hand. Yes. <laughs> exactly. So you saw we all went through a couple of emotions there. I was like, oh, this is fun. They're looking. Oh my God, she's reaching in. <gasps> Harley. <laughs> right? And so, like, you guys heard me gasp a little bit, but it doesn't have to be <gasps> or anything like that. It might just be, or like, if Canary is Canary crying, this is a classic one. You may or may not scream. That is up to you and your comfort and your environment. <laughs> right? You might not want to scream at a con. Maybe you do. I don't know. Um, but if you're gonna do that, I find it helpful for people to at least go, right? You can't really hear that, but my, my tongue is in the right position in my mouth, my throat is slightly tensed, and it's different than, that, that's not interesting, right? But if you're, like there's something more to that. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a good facial thing for, for canaries too. It's also a great way to lessen the tension because it sounds a little silly, but in a good way. Yep. Um, I definitely I'm make noises. So loud. Always, <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm always making it like. Just like whatever. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Uh huh. Totally. So that's actually a great. Let's do attacks towards the camera. So let's say Harley has joined our team. Bears is gonna do a canary cry okay. towards the camera and show you guys kind of what that might look like. Um, and Bunny and I will do other attacky type poses. <laughs> so, cool. Do my I so badly want to turn my hat around like Ash Ketchum and be like, it's time. <laughs> <laughs> right, I wish. Put on music. Like this. Okay, ready, ready? Nice. <laughs> Do it again. Good. Okay. Ready? Uh huh. Oh! <laughs> Good. Good. We're fighting. We're fighting. Mm -hmm. We're vicious. We're and mad. the nice thing about canaries cry, your hands can change where you are too. They might be here to amplify it. They might be at your side because it's all just like guttural in your throat rage. Like it could just be one hand because your other hand is preparing to fight. Like you have so many options. Even if your character has one attack, which is not the case for canary because you're like a kickboxing champion. But like even if your character has one way to attack, there's probably different ways you can do it. Okay. Observe. But she does have one main attack, so do you want to do some magic and we can back you up? Sure. Okay. Now, golly, I wish I could speak backwards, because <laughs> that's how she does a lot of her magic. Lo and behold, she actually does not need to speak her spells to do magic, so the whole rumor of, oh, if you just take out her windpipe, she loses, actually is not accurate. But, um, so, <laughs> so, yes, let's do, let's do some of that. So, I might do some sort of a crouching, and here I'm putting my foot my straight leg towards the camera to make it look a little bit longer. Ah. Exactly. <laughs> I might even like mouth abracadabra. So it looks like my mouth is doing something. I'm literally mouthing abracadabra this whole time. I could mouth what I had for breakfast. I had fish, it was a bad idea, which is true. <laughs> but now my mouth is doing different things <laughs> in the photos, which gives us more variety. Nice. <laughs> and now you know what I had for breakfast. Don't do what I do. <laughs> what else might we do in a group? I find that a lot of the times for group shoots, the environment is pretty important. So it's a little harder to do a group shoot in a studio, actually, because point. there's only so many ways you can move around. That's such but a if you have like a, if your characters are a little more street kiddish, you can go to a railroad or to the actual city or something like that, or go on to a farm environment or something. And yeah. it gives you a lot more opportunities to play with what's around you and get way different levels and things like that, so. Yeah, or say you're at a convention, like 
everybody's going to get a picture in front of that wall, but has everybody taken a picture of them crouching at the top of the wall? Has everybody taken a picture of someone, you know, standing in front of the wall, someone peeking around the wall, and somebody about to jump down from the wall? Like, there's a lot of ways you can use your environment, and that's so, so true. Mm -hmm. um, and so use what's around you. It gives you something to do <laughs> with your hands, which I know is a lot of the thing. Like, if I don't have a prop, it's like... <sighs> <laughs> Usually my hand goes up, right? If my hand is not occupied, my hand is going up. Don't scroll through my Instagram because like half of them, <laughs> my hand is up because um, it's triangles and it looks good. But there's less variety. And so use your environment. If there's a tree nearby, put a branch in front of your face, see what happens. If there's a tree nearby and you want to climb it, go for it. it. <laughs> go for it. it. Jump off of things, interact with people, have fun. Awesome. Great. Well, I feel like we've learned a lot. We have posed <laughs> <laughs> today. Thank you guys for joining us yet again. I hope that this was helpful and informative. Please leave comments on the YouTube video if you guys do watch the YouTube video, if you have questions, if there are any tips that we missed that you want to share with other people as well. This is a great environment to be able to share those tips with people. And of course, hit like, subscribe, all those things, you know it. We're on a bunch of different platforms. We even have like Spotify playlists, which are super cool. Mm -hmm. um, I honestly listen to them all the time. So thank you guys for joining us. I hope this was helpful and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye. <laughs>